The MLS is back, and I could not be more excited. Hope you guys are enjoying this weekend full of, you know, some new leagues, get the Champions America going. Um, I didn't get around to showing you guys my rosters for what I submitted for this week's leagues. I'm actually going to hold off. I'll do an episode Monday uh, where I talk about that. But today we got Road to Glory episode 8, bringing this to you because so much has happened with my roster. I have uh, a ton of movement, a lot of guys out, a lot of guys in. I'm going to break it down for you guys right now. So this is how it started. Um, Bill Hamid got injured right before the season started. He's the starting goalkeeper for DC United. And I saw his price was dropping. He went from, you know, he was pushing up close to 0.5 and then dropped down below 0.4. Um, so I got pretty excited by that. I was thinking, you know, I could try and go pick him up, um, you know, trade essentially one of my keepers. I've got Maxime Cropo. He was also going around 0.5. So I was thinking, um, you know, maybe if I can work something out, I can trade Maxime Cropo, get Bill Hamid, you know, make about 0.1 ETH in the process. And um, Hamid's going to be out for about a month. That's the expe expected return timeline. And in the meantime, I've got um, Alisson, the uh, goalkeeper from Liverpool, and I could use him in my Global All-Stars D4 lineup, um, which is where I would have been using Kripo anyways. So that was kind of my thinking is, you know, I'm sacrificing a little bit in the short term, but I, you know, can make 0.1 ETH. And I think Bill Hamid's probably a better keeper than Kripo um, in the long term. So uh, that was kind of my thinking. And I started, you know, reaching out to some people that had Hamid listed for sale, um, trying to work something out. And it didn't quite happen, but something else did happen. I started talking to a guy uh, who saw that I was kind of, um, you know, trying to trade Kripo. And um, he offered me, you know, a couple different iterations of a deal. Uh, he started out primarily just cash. I looked at his gallery, saw that he had Kenneth Kronholm, who I think is a big value right now. Um, so I built the deal around that. So I got Kenneth Kronholm, Brad Knighton, who I've talked about in previous videos that I really like, um, and then 0.273 ETH. Um, and this came out to being, uh, you know, in my mind, about 0.5 worth of value. So um, Kronholm is selling around 0.2 right now. Um, Brad Knighton selling around 0.03 right now. Um, and then 0.273 ETH. So you know what? I've said, let's do it. This is good. I like that a lot. Kronholm has a lot of the same characteristics as Bill Hamid does. Um, he's injured, expected to be back within the first month of the season, give or take. And, you know, at that point, expected to regain his starting spot. Um, a little bit more risk with Kronholm. Um, Bill Hamid, you know, has a pretty clear line to get back his starting spot. Kenneth Kronholm, uh, Bobby Shuttleworth took over for him last year um, for the Chicago Fire. Did a decent job. Wasn't great, but not terrible either. Um, so, you know, Kronholm will have to win his job back once he gets healthy. But the expectation is that he will um, be able to do that. So that was why I kind of pulled the trigger on this deal. Um, but I didn't stop there, right? So then I saw someone who was desperately looking for an MLS forward. Um, and I reached out to him and just said, hey, no, you're trying to get a forward before the deadline. Um, take a look at my gallery and let me know what you think. And, you know, feel free to, to shoot some trades my way. Um, and that was just by being active in the Discord channel. Um, it was the, um, the want to buy Discord channel. So if you haven't been on that, it's one of the kind of sub links. I don't know what you call them in Discord. Sub Discords within the SoRare. Um, Discord, and it's where people essentially say, hey, I'm trying to buy these players. Um, a little bit of a pro tip, I would look there if you're trying to sell or trade players um, because it's that's where you're going to find the people who are wanting to buy those players. And if you can come to them from a position of, hey, I know you want to buy this guy, I have him, um, that puts you in a lot better spot when you're negotiating than, hey, I'm desperate to sell this guy. Um, so if you put someone in the for sale, people are going to be coming and trying to get bargains Versus if you find somebody in the want to buy category and you go to them and say, hey, I have this person that you want. Now you're kind of in that position of leverage and you can kind of, um, you know, have a little bit better standing when you're doing that negotiation. So a uh, little pro tip uh, probably comes from my, you know, nine to five world where I'm in the procurement and liquidation space. So I'm kind of working on buying and selling all the time. So I have to be thinking about, you know, who's got the leverage in this conversation and how can I, you know, help put myself in a good position to, you know, come out. Um, on a favorable side of this negotiation. Um, and part of that too is you want to help, you know, you want to end in a win-win situation. You want both parties to feel happy. Um, if you don't, personally for me, I mean, ethically, it just feels kind of icky. But also, you know, I've made a lot of friends and I've made a lot of, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of good advice by talking to people that I'm in these conversations with. So that's a little tip. That's how I kind of came across this deal, right? So Carlos Fierro was the guy that um, he that the buyer wanted. Um 
And then we kind of started talking. He said, I've got this Ibrahim Dresovich super rare. That's where it started. I was a little hesitant because it seemed like a really good value, but I just didn't know anything about him. Um, and, you know, having a player that's that expensive that I just don't know anything about kind of scared me. Um, so we went through, you know, probably 10, 15 different counter offers, um, looking at, you know, different kind of goalkeepers in the Ever, Ever, Ever DVC, uh or the Jupiler League. Um, he had another super rare that I was looking at. And eventually we kind of came back to this, which was almost where we started. Um, but, you know, he threw in just a little bit of ETH. Um, that was all he had in his account. Um, and I threw in Lee Young, who is a defender um, for Jean Book, um, who actually puts up really good scores. If you're looking for a budget defender to help you with an Asia League lineup, I would recommend looking at him. Um, it kind of hurt me to let him go, but he offered to throw the Ethan on top of it. So I said, let's do it and got it done. So this was pretty exciting. My first Super Rare card entered the gallery. Then, on a little bit of an unrelated note, um, I got Kim Tae Hwan. Um, he is in the K-League, plays for Suwon Blue Wings. He's a 20-year-old who puts up massive scores, and I got him for under 0.1 ETH. So I really, you know, <laughs> have trouble wrapping my head around why his value is so low. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. I did my research. Um, we'll see. But, you know, at his age, worst cases, if he, you know, maybe isn't a full-time starter, even though he's been playing really consistently lately. You know, he's 20 years old. He, if he locks up the starting job three years from now, he's still going to have a good 10-year career ahead of him. So um, this is someone that I'm, you know, investing in now, and I, I plan to keep around, you know, always open to trading guys. But um, the plan is I think he'll be, you know, a long-term part of my team versus, you know, Lee Young up here. He's 34 years old now. Um, so for essentially the different, and he's going for about 0.65. So I was going to go buy another Lee Young. Then I found Kim Taewon, and it was like, you know, for 0.03 more, I can get a guy who's putting up really similar scores and is 14 years younger. So it seemed like kind of a no-brainer. Um, so I knocked this deal out pretty quick as soon as I finished the Lee Young deal. Um, and I got Tim hey, Kim Taewon into my gallery and submitted in my lineup, confirmed my lineup for Global All-Stars Division 4. I had three seconds left until the deadline um, for the end of the, you know, game week lineups being finalized. So... This was all done, you know, right at the buzzer. So it was pretty, uh, got my heart racing a little bit, but it was cool. It was awesome. Had a great time doing it. And then big, big trade happened today. So I didn't feel great about having Dresovich. I just didn't know enough about him. It's a super rare, you know, I could have tried to build a D3 Euro challenger team, but I don't even have a D4 challenger team. So, um, it just didn't really make sense for me to have him in my lineup. Um, in my opinion. So, I went back to my friend Powell Trader. I mentioned him in a previous video. Um, I've talked to him a little bit more. I think I probably didn't do a great job describing kind of what he's looking for in trades in that video. Um, so I may do a future one later. But essentially, he's looking for, you know, high volume trades. He's trying to help people kind of level up. Um, and, he's, you know, he's making a profit while he's doing it. I'm not saying he's doing this out of the goodness of his heart. Um, but that's the benefit is, you know, if you've got a bunch of kind of low pieces, you can work with him. And he tries to, you know, have about 20% of margin baked in. But if you've got a lot of like tier three rewards and you are trying to get up to a tier two or a tier one, I mean, it's a decent way to do it. Um, it, it really, it's a sense of liquidity that it adds to the market, right? I didn't feel comfortable sitting on Dresovich. If he got injured, I would just feel, you know, really stupid, honestly, just because I don't know anything about him. Um, and I just didn't feel good having him in my gallery. So I wanted to move him quick. I was looking at Pal Trader's gallery, found some guys that I really liked, um, and I just kind of started working with him and figured out what he valued Dresovich at. And then I went in and I kind of found some guys that I thought were values. Um, I found more than what he thought Dresovich was worth. Um, so I threw in some ETH that I got in that previous deal with it uh, when I sold Kripo. Um, And I came out with a ton of new players that I am super, super excited about. So I'm not going to break them down yet. Let's go here. So this is how it started versus how it ended. Um, so I started with Kripo, Carlos Fierro, Lee Young, and no ETH. And I finished with 0 0.04. And it's the, the, those three guys' values together. Uh, Kripo is about 0.5, Fierro is about 0.18, and Lee Young is about 0.06. came out to 0.74 in value. Um, I traded all those guys for this assortment of players. Um, and I, so I got um, – well, I'm not going to read them to you. But um, all these guys plus 0.04 ETH for a total value of 0.928 ETH which is a 20% increase in my value. 
And while that's super exciting for me, the part that's even better is that I found these guys' values, right? And as I was, you know, going and searching for these guys, it wasn't necessarily, oh, these guys are going to help my team today. It's these guys, I think they're just, you know, really solid buys. And it was, you know, a little bit um, maybe intuitive. It wasn't what I was thinking on the front end as I was, you know, making these trades. But I think really what it came down to was I was selling high on these guys that are, you know, going into their season and performing either, you know, projected to perform well or already performing well in the case of Leon. And I was buying guys who were at their floor in value. Um, you know, either not playing yet or, you know, wrap, like wrapping up their season. So those guys over in the Eredivisie, um, Ethan Horvath is a goalie playing for Bruges, who's the backup right now. But there's, you know, some rumors he may come back to the MLS. And if he does that, um, you know, he'd be one of the top three goalies in the league, um, you know, as soon as he came in. He's, you know, potentially – he's one of the guys on the U.S. men national team, you know, one, two, or three. He's always on the lineup in our biggest games. So – um, if he was to come back, he'd be kind of at that Matt Turner level who plays for the New England Revs, doesn't have a card yet, so maybe you don't know him, but um, you know, up there with Matt Turner, Eloy Room, Pedro Galese. Um, so if he you know, if Ethan Ethan Horvath comes back and gets a starting role, I think his value is probably gonna go, you know, up to 0.8 almost overnight. Um there's no guarantee he does, you know. None of this is financial advice either. Uh, I need to get better about saying that. You guys do your research, make your decisions. I'm just kind of walking you through what I've done. Um, but yeah, so my whole thought here is buy these guys low and sell them high. And I'm going to show you guys a couple examples. Hop over here to so rare data. So Mel Moonstein, um, did a terrible job pronouncing that, uh, 21 year old defender for the air to BC. Um, and his values are pretty crazy. So, you know, here's the big spike, um, kind of early March, right? End of February, early March. He had one go as high as 4-4, four, four, which is crazy. Um, but he had a couple over three, and then was kind of hanging out in that two to two and a half range. Right now he's going, at, you know, one just sold under 0. 0.05. So from 0. 0.3, 0. 0.25 down to 0. 0.05, you can get him at an 80% discount right now, essentially, which is just insane. I mean, there's one in the market for 0. 0.062. The way that the market's going, all these guys in Euro, Europe are just trending down. So I probably wouldn't even buy it at 0. 0.062 right now. Um, I might just kind of hold out. I think there's like four more weeks of the Eredivisie. So maybe, you know, as the season winds down in the you know last game or right after the last game, maybe it goes down to 0 0.05, 0 0.04, who knows? Um, but I don't think it's going to just kind of spike up all of a sudden. So you're probably okay to just kind of like, you know, hang on and, and not feel rushed, but wait for a really good deal to come on the market and, you know, buy. And, you know, I think if you buy at 0.062 and your plan is to hold into the next Eredivisie season, I think you're gonna, you know, be in really good shape. So um, I was super excited to be able to get a copy of his. Um, another guy I picked up, Julian Desart. Um, similar story, right? Playing, he's in the Jupiler League, so the Belgian Pro League. Um, but he had a bunch going up here in kind of the one five range. Um, you know, a lot up around point one. Um, now he's trending down around point oh five. Midfielder, twenty six years old. He's a super super talented player. Um, he actually, if we look back, and I want to, so this is another trick, right? So Sober Data uh, added these filters up here so you can look all the way back in time at their old scores. I mean, look at this guy. Over the course of, you know, the last three seasons or whatever, he's just littered up here in, like, the green scores. He's got very few down here in yellow and almost nothing in the bad range. So, like, if we're thinking about this in the, like, terms of how I do my player valuations, he's super consistent. And a super high podium percent. Like, there's not much else you want. Uh, last 40 of 58. That's insane. So, you know, he's had a couple of knocks. And I think that's the one thing is can he stay healthy? Um, but I'm super excited to have him on my team. Another super cool thing, if you notice right here, 1 of 100, 2018. So that means his first card ever minted, I now own. Uh, which I just thought was kind of cool. Um, I don't know if you know, how much the collectability aspect of the game is going to take off. But if it does, having the 1 of 100 from 2018, um, that's one of the first cards ever made. And I just think, you know, that's cool, especially for a player of his caliber. Um, maybe some diehard Julian Dessart fans are out there, and if they get on the platform, they'd be willing to pay a premium for it. Maybe Julian Dessart himself gets on the platform, and he wants his card, uh, and that would just be cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I just thought that was cool. You know, um, I didn't necessarily 
I wouldn't pay extra for it probably myself today just because I don't know if that aspect of the game is going to pick up. And with my budget, that's probably not where I want to invest. I would rather invest in guys who I think are going to, you know, I know have that utility and I know we'll be able to flip based on that utility. Um, but, you know, to be able to pick that up, I thought was a super cool kind of little add on bonus. Um, and then, oh, and another note on this. So I mentioned earlier, like, don't go into every negotiation just trying to, like, rip off the other person. So uh, there's a guy I talked to. His name's Coltrane. Um, he's on Twitter. I reached out to him on Discord. Um, but he was a super cool guy. He had some guys listed that I was looking at. I messaged him, said, hey, you interested in working out a deal on these two guys? He said, I'm trying to sell the whole – I've got this whole lot of MLS players, and I'm trying to sell them all together. Would you be interested in that? I didn't have the budget for it, but I knew a couple guys who did have a big budget. So I reached out to them and just said, hey, are you guys interested in this? I let the guy know, like, I don't have the budget to do that, but I'll reach out and see if I can help you out. So, I mean, you know, it took me probably five minutes worth of just reaching out to a couple guys, telling them what the gallery was, what he was looking for. Um, and it didn't end up working out. But from that, right, Coltrane, the guy who had these players for sale, uh, I just kind of was, kept talking to him a little bit. And he said, hey, Julian DeSart's a guy you should look at, you know. Um, Challenger Europe's kind of a little bit more where I'm familiar. And if you, you know, are interested, I think he's a good player to kind of target right now. Um, so he's got these scores, which are awesome. But also, he's rumored for a transfer to Gank this offseason. Um, so they're sending somebody out and bringing him in. I'm not as familiar with it. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't have felt comfortable investing a huge sum into it without doing a lot more research. But this guy seemed really knowledgeable, was really helpful, friendly. Um, I was able to get a cool card of a guy who's been producing really well um, for a super good value. Um, so I was really excited to pick him up. Um, and my point with that was, you know, if, one, if I had just gone in and tried to, you know, get a great price from this guy and if he didn't do it, just stop answering his messages, um, I never would have found this out, right? So now I've got a cool card um, with, you know, this card potentially has the most upside of anything in my whole gallery. You know, being a one of 100 2018 super high level player, um, rumor transferred to one of the bigger leagues in the Challenger Europe. So uh, pretty excited about it. Um, so Bobby Shuttleworth is the starting goalie for Chicago. I mentioned him when I was looking at the slides. Um, Kenneth Cronholm is rumored to, you know, be on the way back, in which case he'll resume a starting spot. Um, in the next few weeks is when he's slated to be healthy. Um, and if that happens, I think what we're going to see is him essentially assume these values, right? Um, he'll be playing behind the same defense. And in theory, he's a better goalie because he's winning the spot, right? So, and they're both older keepers. So it's not like it's an age value thing with Shuttleworth. Um, so he'll be in that kind of 0.4 to 0.45. And I got him, you know, at around a 0.2 value is how I was valuing, valuing him when I was making that trade. So, you know, if in three weeks I can turn 0.2 into 0 0.4, 0 0.45, I'm going to feel great about that. And then at that point, maybe I look to go flip him and get another younger goalie. Um, I don't know, but just something I'm kind of, you know, I'm always thinking about buying low and selling high. That's how you find value and you maximize that value. Um, another example of that, Alan Cruz, right? So this is actually someone else mentioned this to me in another one of my trade discussions I was having. Um, last year, he didn't have a very good year. He plays for Cincinnati, who, you know, is not a great team. They finished absolutely last in the MLS the last two years. Um, they've only been in the MLS for two years. They're a new expansion team. So um, just not off to a great start. But in their inaugural season, right, the first season in the MLS 2019, Alan Cruz was their MVP, um, which, you know, on the worst team, yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, look, I mean, look at these scores. That's pretty solid. Um, he's pretty consistent, and he has some upside. I think he had seven goals in 2019 um, and maybe a few assists. So that's not bad, especially for a guy you can pick up at .03. But so last year he didn't do as well. The reason I think he may regain some of his 2019 form is that Frankie Amaya is leaving. So Frankie Amaya was the number one draft pick. Um, for Cincinnati and he came in and kind of took Cruz's position a little bit um, because I think you know Frankie Amaya is just a better player um, I have a copy of his as well that I'm really excited about super young player in the MLS that I think you know he's just going to be really consistent and solid but this is about Cruz so I think now that Frankie Amaya has left Cruz can kind of come back in and reestablish himself in the central midfield um, Cincinnati also added some new attacking pieces up top, uh, Lucho Acosta and Brenner. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, maybe if he has some weapons up top, he, he, can, be, he can become a little bit more of a facilitator. He 
can also, you know, arrive late to the box and have some um, drop back passes, you know, from Lucho or from Brenner that he can finish off. So uh, I expect Cincinnati to just be better this year. So I don't think, you know, I think picking up players on that team is, you know, probably a good investment because I think they're going to appreciate and value as the team does better, as they score more goals, they'll have more assists um, and just kind of naturally raise the tide for everybody a little bit. So um, I hope this was helpful. A little bit long-winded, but a ton of changes that I wanted to keep get you guys updated on before Monday, because Monday I really want to talk about what happened to the MLS um, this weekend. Game's going on right now. I'm recording this at halftime of LAFC versus Austin. A huge blooper in the first 10 minutes or 20 minutes of the LAFC game. They accidentally subbed off, Car- off Carlos Vela. It was a mess. Um, but I'm going to go finish that game and then get ready to watch my Nashville SC take on FC Cincinnati. Uh, hopefully we can get a big win there. Hopefully all y'all's weekends are going great. Maybe have some SO5 successes coming down the pipeline. Um, and maybe some of your favorite teams are winning in real life as well. But, uh, that's all for now. I will see you guys Monday with another episode of this road to glory series. As I kind of recap my first weekend in champions of champions America, and we see what happened. So thanks guys. Have a great night.